I want to teach you how to intercede. Because if you learn how to pray in this next year, 2024, you will be unstoppable. Because see, the, the, the devil's not intimidated by your YouTube subscriptions. He's not intimidated by how much information you hear. Matter of fact, the devil can outquote most of us in the scriptures anyways. What he's intimidated about is your prayer life. He's intimidated about the idea that this is the year you finally learn how to intercede and pray. So welcome to the living room, and I'm Papa Siggs, and I'm going to be a spiritual father, and across the living room of, of New York City, Long Island, Miami, Northwest Indiana, Bakersfield, London, come on UK fam, we're going to learn how to intercede and pray together right now. Now if you're visiting from another church, I'm sorry that you didn't really pray that much at your other church. But that might be the reason why you never got a breakthrough. Because there's some things you can't preach yourself out of. You got to prophesy your way through it. You got to declare your way through it. You got to intercede and pray your way through it. So listen, if you go to the Catholic church, they teach you how to pray. Am I right? You got to repeat what they tell you to repeat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how to pray how Jesus prayed. I'm going to teach you how to intercede. Are you willing to go there with me? And you're going to feel a tangible shift in the atmosphere because I'm not playing games in 2024. You're going to feel a tangible change. You're going to start to feel when, and some of you are like, but I'm too shy to pray. You weren't too shy to sin. So you better stop being shy to pray. You weren't shy when you were turning at the club, turning up at the club. You weren't, you weren't shy with, you know, flexing your riz on some chick trying to get, okay. So let's not be shy about the things of God if we weren't shy in the world. Okay. You got men who are like, I'm too shy to pray for my wife. You weren't too shy to make out with her. So now we got to step into boldness in this year and we, it's your prayer life that's under attack. The devil hates when the people of God begin to pray. Are you with me? Are you willing to go there across every location? We're going to start. This is the first Sunday of the year. We're going to start it by praying. That's how we're going to start this year by praying. So here's how Papa Siggs does it. So first, what I start with is I don't start with petitions, which is begging, asking God to do stuff. That's not a relationship. You know what I start with? I start with adoration. I start with exaltation. I start by magnifying him. Oh, you see how the atmosphere starts changing? And you can borrow my words because we're going to do this together. I start by saying, Heavenly Father, I exalt you. Above every name that is a name, Jesus, you are exalted. Lord, I lift you on high. Oh God, above all my problems, all my concerns and worries, you are high and lifted up. I magnify you, God. You are matchless. Come on, don't watch me do it. Do this with me right now. Stand up in your living room, wherever you're at. Just begin to love on him. Lord, you and you alone are worthy of my affection. You and you alone are worthy of my attention. Come on, you can use the same phrases as me, but you're just adoring him. Oh God, I adore you. I worship you. You have all of my attention right now, God. I give you all my attention. All my focus is on you, Jesus. I'm looking at you, the author and the finisher of my faith. Oh, I lift you up. I glorify you. I magnify you. God, you are matchless. There is none like you. The fairest of 10,000. The lily of the valley. The rose of Sharon. Oh God, we worship you in this place. Come on, you feel? You feel that? Come on, get your emotions in alignment. See, don't let your soul lead. Let your spirit lead right now. You begin to push past your own thoughts. God, I lift you up. High and exalted over Long Island, New York City, Miami, Bakersfield. We lift you up, God. Lord, you are undefeated. You have all power, all might, all wisdom. Yeah, come on. Okay, we're going to shift now. We're going to go into the next portion. So after that, what I start doing, the Bible says, enter his courts with praise, enter his gates with thanksgiving. So as you enter into the next portion of intercession, you begin to thank him. Come on, all over this place, start to thank him right now. Thank him, thank him. Gratitude unlocks the door to the glory. It unlocks the door to his presence. Just begin to say, I thank you. Some of you don't feel like you have a reason to thank him. You better thank again. Come on. 
Father, I thank you. I thank you, God, for keeping me another year. I thank you for my children. I thank you for my car. Lord, I thank you for my house. I thank you for the things that I didn't even choose, but they're making me more like you. I thank you for my job. I thank you for my employer, God. Come on, I, I'm thankful. I'm thankful, God. I'm thankful. Come on, open up a well. Come on, it's too quiet. It's too quiet up in here. Sometimes you got to press into thankfulness. I'm thankful for my spouse. If you're married, you might feel, I don't feel thankful. Listen, intercession is not about feelings. It's about faith an activation of faith. I thank you for my spouse. If you're single, God, I thank you that you're preparing me. And as you prepare me, you are preparing my mate and you will join us together. I thank you in advance for what you're doing. Yeah, come on, come on. Father, I thank you. Yes, 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 yes. I thank you for the trials. I thank you for the pain. I thank you for the tribulations because you knew that it was going to make me more like you. You knew that it wasn't going to destroy me. I'm thankful that they walked out on me because it drove me to the throne to know you more, God. I'm thankful that they rejected me because it taught me your acceptance and I learned another revelation of who you are. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Yeah, come on. See, this, what's happening right now is you're renewing your mind. Thanksgiving renews your mind. You hear that sound? See, your spirit is regenerated when you accept Jesus, but your mind must be renewed. So when you're thankful, you begin to renew your mind. I'm thankful for my children. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for my past. I'm thankful for my present. I'm thankful for the future. I begin to thank God and my mind is being renewed. We're taking captive every thought that erects itself up against the word of God. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right, this is the next phase now. Now I'm teaching you how to intercede. Our whole church is doing this. So I start how we started with just adoration, lavishing Him. Then I transition into a time of thanking the Lord. And, I be, and I'm telling you, my soul starts coming into alignment. Now, now here's the next phase. This one's going to feel awkward for many of you. This is called declaration. See, the oldest book of the Bible is Job. Job said, I will decree a thing and it will be established unto me. The Bible says the power of life and death is in your tongue. So this next portion might feel weird for some of you because you're like, who am I to say this? But you are using delegated authority. You are a child of the king. And so just like my daughter, Bella, she carries my authority. If I say, Bella, go and do this thing, she's not carrying out her own will. She's responding to a command that I gave her. Does that make sense? So Jesus commanded us, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead, preach the gospel. He commanded. So the devil doesn't respond to your voice. He responds to God's command through your voice. Can I get an amen? And so for this next portion, we're going to begin to declare. We're going to begin to declare and you can use my words. So let's, let's begin to declare. So listen to what I'm, I declare, I'm going to do some on your behalf. I'm just going to begin to say this and you guys just go in and start to pray with me. I declare that my spouse will be saved this year, that my spouse will be filled with the Holy Spirit, that my spouse will be activated in the gifts of the spirit, that we will pray together, that we will read the Bible together. I declare that my finances will be blessed that I am a river and not a reservoir and there will be a multiplication because he gives seed to the sower I declare that I am going to walk in the favor of God I declare that I am not going to enter this year and, and carry depression and anxiety not anymore I break the power of every demonic thought in my life I pull down every stronghold that the enemy has erected in my mind I speak to every demonic spirit and I bind you in the name of Jesus and command you to loose my life and let me go. Come on, begin to make bold declarations. I declare that I am going to operate in faith this year and that God is going to open doors that only He can open and close doors that shouldn't be open. And I declare that the I am the seed of Abraham, that I will see the promises of God fulfilled in my life. I declare that I will come into perfect health this year. 
and that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now we could go longer, but do you guys, you see, even as you begin to declare, see, you're getting your fight back. You're getting your fight back. The devil wants to keep you silenced. The devil wants to shut you up. Your own flesh wants to tell you, who are you to make those declarations? But it's not my power. It's the power of God that works within me. See, this is greater he that is in me than he that is in the world. It's the spirit that's inside of me that's, uh, that's co collaborating I'm, I'm in that declaration. Okay, here's the last part. This is the last phase. Now, what we just did, this could take me hours or it could take me minutes. But I've been doing this since I was 15 years old. This is intercession. You could do it in different orders, but this is how you do, this is how you do it. Okay, the last one, and I, this is my favorite. The last portion of intercession for me has always been praise. Let me tell you why. Because praise is your proof. Come on, somebody say that praise is my proof. So you just declared a whole bunch of stuff that's not real yet. And praise is your proof that it's real in the spiritual realm before it becomes real in the natural realm. Praise is your proof that faith is the evidence of things hoped for and the substance of things not seen. I don't see it with my physical eyes, but in the supernatural realm, I already see it and I'm going to praise. See, in the world, they praise after it happens. When your favorite team scores a goal, everybody goes, go. They praise after it happens. But in the kingdom, you praise before it happens and then it happens. It's an activation of your faith. So when I'm interceding, all of a sudden I'll get done and I might feel discouraged and depressed and that anxiety might start coming back and those thoughts might start coming back and all of a sudden I say, and, I, and there's no music, there's no band. See, people say, you're a dancing pastor. I say, I'm not a dancing pastor. I'm a dancing believer. I dance in the living room. I dance in the bathroom. I dance. I learned a long time ago that when you begin to praise at the end of your intercession, it sends confusion into the devil's camp. The devil, he begins to say, wait a second. I gave them everything I got. I unloaded the whole clip. Why are they still dancing? And that's because you can't stop me, devil, because I see by faith what's getting ready to happen, and I know how to praise. I know how to, you're not too old to dance. You're not too old to praise. You're not too old to operate in faith. Come on. So sometimes you gotta begin to praise like this. David knew how to dance. David knew how to undignify himself. David knew how. David said, I already know I win. The fight is fixed. I'm dancing. I'm praising. Come on. Come on. Cut it. Cut it. Cut it. Okay, let me show you. Some of you are like, that's so foolish. That's the point. Because we're contradicting the natural mind. We're operating in the spirit realm. See, in the spirit realm, David looks at Goliath and says, there's only one way to kill him. It's this sling and a stone. It won't make any sense to the military strategist, but it'll get the job done. There's always an ingredient in the spiritual realm of foolishness. Why? Because foolishness undignifies you. It lowers your pride, and then God gets the glory. So when people say, your whole situation changed, and you've been in that situation for years and years, why did it finally change? What did you do? You'll say, oh, you don't want to hear the answer. What do you mean you don't want to hear the answer? When I tell you what I did, you're not going to like it. But you've been in this situation for years and years, and now it's all gone. Everything changed. What did you do different? Oh, you don't want to hear the answer. I begin to praise. I begin to praise. I begin to praise. Why is that so powerful? Because when you begin to praise, what you are saying is, God, what happens next is on you. 
I didn't do anything to create this. I just got out of the way and said, God, I'm going to praise you. God, I'm going to worship you. God, I'm going to dance. God, I'm going to shout. God, I'm going to worship. I know all of my kids are going to be saved. All of my kids are going to serve you. I know my finances are coming into alignment. All I'm going to do is praise. I'll step back and pray. Praise is my weapon. Praise is the proof. Praise is my weapon. Praise is the proof. And sometimes I start clapping my hands and a thunderclap is released and the devil hears this I'm not dead yet you can't shut me up yet and I begin to clap like this and I say you're gonna have to hear me neighbors you're gonna have to hear me in the other bedroom this is the sound of breakthrough this is the sound of healing this is the sound of intercession this is a thunderclap listen to me devil you can't shut me up okay hold hold on hold on hold on Okay, let me show you an impression of a dead person. <laughs> Stop acting dead. You're not dead yet. I don't know who that was for, but the devil wants you acting dead. Oh, that's not my personality. Oh, yes, it is. I saw you in the spirit when you were a child. You didn't act like this. And to enter the kingdom, you've got to become like a child again. It's not an age thing. It's not an age thing. It's a revelation. And I'm saying, oh God, I'm not, I'm going to the grave loud. I'm going to the grave loud. I'm going to the grave loud. You're not going to take my praise. You're not going to shut me up. You're not going to get me acting like I'm in a tomb. Jesus resurrected and so will I. Somebody's got to learn how to praise. So, so here's the thing. I'm giving you permission in this church. People are dealing with stuff. You look at them, they're annoying. Well, guess what? Then heaven's gonna be real annoying to you because there's people going through stuff. And when you go through this intercession, there's a moment of worship and praise where you just gotta release it to God. So on the count of three, in Miami, Long Island, New York City, all over the world, everybody watching right now, we are gonna let out just a 20, 30 second praise. And what that praise is gonna be, a, our voice is gonna resound in the atmospheres of the earth. And as we begin to release this praise, what we're saying is it's 2024, devil. If you were gonna kill me, you would have already done it, but God didn't allow you. It's 2024. You're letting all the haters, all the backbiters, all the backstabbers, you, see, you, tried to, you tried to shut me up, you tried to put me in a corner, you tried to dismiss me, but I still have a voice and the Lord's gonna use my voice to declare his goodness in the earth and you're not st shutting me down. This, this praise, it means something more, that your best is ahead of you and not behind you. You have not seen your best days. You have not lived your best days. Your best is ahead of you and not behind you. The best is ahead of you. Come on, Bella. We're going to face our future. We're going to face our future. We're not. This is what praise represents. We're going to face our future. Come on, somebody get a praise in you. One, two, three. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Yes. Yes! Yes! Glory! Glory! Glory!